In part three, we completed a layout sketch for our fork on the front plane. This layout sketch had several references going back to our fork dropout layout and our important tube diameters layout that both came from our bike geometry file that was inserted in to this fork file as our first feature. For part four of this video, we will be working on the layout located on the tilted plane that passes through the steering axis, as we see here. And because everything is located on tilted planes, things can get a little bit confusing. So if you want, you can make life a little bit easier by setting up some custom views that will orient the fork so that the steering axis is vertical. To do this, what we want to do is view our tilted plane directly head-on or normal to the plane. So I've highlighted that plane. I'm going to go up to my view orientations and hit the normal two. Now because of the way that I've oriented my planes, what's happening is I appear to be looking at the back side of the bike instead of the front side. There's nothing wrong with this, but I feel a little bit more comfortable viewing this plane from the front. So if I hit the normal two button again, it'll simply toggle to the other side. Of course, when you're doing this operation, you will not yet have created this sketch. I'm now going to hit the space bar. Here on this button, we click on New View, and I'm going to call this Tilted Right Plane. Say OK. Now I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard, rotate back to my front view. I'll do this carefully until I'm looking directly at the front view. This is too far. This is exactly aligned. Hit the space bar again. We'll make a new view. Call this tilted front view. Now no matter how we orient this, if we hit the space bar and hit the view that we want, it will always come back to this newly oriented view. It is not necessary to do this, but some of you may find it more comfortable to do so because now our views have all the lines going either vertical or horizontal. And now you can see a better understanding as to why I was drawing these construction lines coming off of the fork end area because these will be used to align with similar features in the right hand tilted view. Now let's take a look at the features that need to be in our fork right layout sketch. First of all, I don't think we are going to be needing any of the sketches located in our inserted geometry file. So editing the sketch, you see that the first thing I did was to draw a representation of the tire cross section. This is to make sure that the top area of the blade does not rub on the tire in this area here. I drew a 25 millimeter diameter circle, made the center of it on the front plane, then I added a point, it's coincident to the circle, and also pierced to the circle that represents the tire in the front layout sketch. So when working on this sketch, we also need to have our front layout sketch visible. I then proceeded to draw the curves that represent the guides for the blade. This one represents the outer guide. This one represents the inner guide. And this one represents the leading edge and the trailing edge guide. I chose to make my guides out of splines and arcs up at the top area and straight lines down below all the way down to the fork ends. You might choose to do something else. For example, you might have one continuous spline starting at the top and coming down to the bottom, depending on whatever your design happens to be. Now you'll recall in our front view, I drew a diamond shape that represented the four corners of the eventual profile that I will be sweeping down my guides. You can see that the outer guide curve goes to this top point the inner guide curve goes to the bottom point, 
and the leading slash trailing guide curve is going to the center, which is actually in alignment with both this point and this point when we look at this plane straight on. In my case, these two splines have horizontal relations on the control handles. And this is an arc which has a tangent relation to a horizontal construction line. I'm not sure why I made this an arc. This could have been a spline like these as well. Zooming out a little bit, we see that I made the width of the blades 36 millimeters right where they pass by the tire. This could certainly be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller if you want. And I made the thickness of the blades themselves about 22 millimeters. And again, these could be a little bit thicker or thinner depending on your design. Now let's go down to the fork ends and see what's happening there. Down here we can see the fork end when viewed edge on. And we can see that the blade comes down to the center of the wheel axle. Now from this view I think we can start to understand what the logic was behind drawing these lines in the front view layout. By taking these lines and connecting them to these lines with coincident relations it allows us to align the axle to the axle in this view, the top of the fork end to the top of the fork end of this view, and the bottom of the fork end to the bottom of the fork end in this view. So if we were to take this view and look at it directly straight on like this, we can see how these alignments work. I'm going to use one of those views I created to look perfectly normal or directly at this view. Right now we're just very slightly off, so I'll hit my space bar and hit tilted right plane. And then zoom back in again since it automatically zooms out to fit the view. Now we have a perfect aligned view here and these are the lines that go back to my front layout. And what I'm going to do is delete some of the relations that are aligning the bottom of the blade here and show you how I got the blade aligned to the fork end and how I also located the fork end in this axis. Here I've broken several of my relations and I've dragged the end of the blade out away from the fork end just so I can see what I'm working on. And then I will start adding relations and dimensions to demonstrate exactly how I brought all of these elements together. The fork end is a flat plate which is supposed to be six millimeters wide. Question is, where is this edge of the fork end supposed to be located? Remember that a wheel axle has to fit between this fork end and the one on the other side, so the dimension from this surface to our front plane is critical. This is where our inserted bike geometry file comes into play. If we go to our planes folder, I'll close the sketches, we have a fork dropout plane which represents the location of the inside face of the dropout slot. What we want to do is make a coincident relation between this line and this plane. So I'm going to temporarily show this plane and then holding my control key I'm going to click on this line and the plane and say collinear. Now I can go ahead and hide that plane and see that all my lines are black for the fork end. Of course this top edge is aligning with this line which aligns with this line in the front view and the bottom edge is aligning with this line which aligns with this edge in the front view. By aligning this edge with our fork dropout plane the distance from here to the front plane is 50 millimeters meaning that the distance from fork end to fork end on the inner faces is going to be a total of 100 millimeters which is the exact same size is your front wheel axle. Now we can focus on where the end of the blade is supposed to go in relation to the fork end. As a matter of convenience I'm going to make the bottom of the blade go to the center of the wheel even though we're going to be cutting off most of this area of the blade. So I'll just make a coincident relation between these two, actually collinear. And then what I want to do is add 
a line going across. I'm going to make that line collinear with this line here. Now what I want to do is give the width of the blade where it's going to meet the top of the fork end because as I mentioned most of this is going to be chopped away later on. I'm going to make the width of my blade about 15 millimeters down at the bottom here. Yours might be different. And what I want is the center of the blade in this area to match up with the center of the fork end. I'll also mention that this guide curve that represents the leading and trailing edge is going to the midpoint of this line here. So the spacing down at this end is even from here to here and from here to here. I'm going to add a sketch point. I'm going to put it on the midpoint of the fork end. Then I'm going to make a relation between this line and this point by holding again my control key down, which I've been doing all along. And I'm going to make another midpoint relation. What that does is it brings this part of the blade where it meets the fork end on center with the thickness of the fork end. This portion continuing downward, of course, is getting farther and farther off center, but most of this, as I mentioned before, is going to be cut away. We're purposely going all the way down to the center axis because we want that sweep to go beyond this point to guarantee that when we chop it away, we have enough material to remove. The last thing I want is to add some arcs here and here that represents that tapering transition from the blade to the fork end. So I'm going to just draw a three-point arc here and another one here. I'll make them tangent to the fork end. I'm going to draw a line connecting the two together and make that line horizontal. And then finally I'm going to add about an eight millimeter dimension here. You can make that a little bit bigger, smaller, depending on what you want. Now what we have is all the geometry that we need at the fork end. So by the time we're done with this project, the lines we're really going to see are going to be this edge here, transitioning to the fork end, coming down, over, and then back up again. All this material here and this material here will be removed. We can now finish this sketch and see what we've got. Here's our brand new layout on the right plane. You can see the alignments to the front plane layout sketch. And up at the top here, we see how the top of the blade is aligning to this placeholder diamond shape where eventually the cross section of the blade is going to be started and sweep down to the bottom. And one thing that we also might want to do at this point is add another sketch up on our crown top plane that just simply represents what the very top of the crown looks like where it meets the head tube. This might be convenient to have later on, as we'll see. That's the completion of part four. In part five, we will finally start making some solid geometry. But getting all these layouts correct will go a long way to making the next following steps a lot easier.